all right, it wasn't cool until there was like that in a grand floating rock style there. I mean, that was. Oh, what the hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome, I am Zabraxi, and what in the world is Bright Memory and Should You Care? I will answer that first question, you can answer the second. Wow, what an interesting demo. So, I've wanted to try this demo for Bright Memory for a little while now, I had heard about it, and it looks really good. So, this is now a game that is getting rebranded to the name Bright Memory Infinite, which is coming to the PC and the Xbox Series X as of right now. That may change. There may be more ports and consoles that will also be available for, maybe it's like the PS5. I'm not sure about the Switch, but it's possible, I suppose. This is a game that's getting a lot of publicity for how good it looks, and the fact that it is made by one guy in China, and wow, it, yeah. It's impressive. It's genuinely impressive. I am going to separate that for the most part. So let me just get that stuff out of the way because I do want to talk about this demo as a demo and as a game. And I don't want to get hung up on the fact that it's one guy. I would like to be able to present what I feel and how I want to talk about this as, a, as its art form. And I, I just don't want to deal with the, oh, if I criticize something, then, oh, well, it's made by just one guy. Or if I praise something, it's like, well, it's really impressive for just one guy. Like, I want to give the guy credit when credit is due, and I want to give the guy uh, the same criticism I would give anybody, including myself. So let's just get this out of the way. In terms of gameplay and the immediate visuals, this is incredibly impressive for a single person. In terms of polish for a demo, this is expected of what I would... Actually, well, better than expected from what I would... Uh, expect to get from one person. There are a lot of bugs, there are a lot of animation issues, there are a lot of polish problems. The demo is very much rough around the edges in, in a lot of cases. So in terms of some stuff, it's really good and impressive for one person. And in other ways, it's very clearly made by one person. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about the actual demo itself and how I feel about it. The first things first, I want to talk about, wow, like the audio effects. So let's talk about audio, seriously. So audio effects in this are are pretty good. There are some that are so impactful, especially with the guns. Like the weapons, well, especially the guns, there are three different types of guns. You have this uh, kind of assault rifle and this pistol and this basically single fire gun, a single rounded, uh, single fire shotting. Sh uh, shotting, good one, shooting weapon. They all feel and sound really well. But there are a lot of really loose sound effects, things that just feel like they have no weight. Uh, for example, you also you get ability to use a sword, and you swing a sword, and that sword shoots basically light beams, essentially, at the target. And you get two additional abilities you can use with the sword while you're using it. One is to basically do like a one big attack, and then uh, at the at that area where you're facing, and then the other one is to do basically a, a big ground slam. For a move that you, like, literally jump into the ground, uh, the air and then slam your weapon into the ground, it, it feels super weak. Really, really weak. Now, contrary to that, when you shoot the guns, it, everything feels like it has this massive impact. Everything feels like it's got weight to it. Every bullet feels like it's getting ricocheted off of an enemy or off of a wall. Every gun fire feels like your body is being jolted back from the impact of the weapon. It genuinely sounds incredible. A lot of the sound effects say around like walking and whatnot, getting hit and hearing enemies get damaged and getting damaged. All of that stuff is incredibly clear. It's incredibly obvious where you're getting uh, hit from. It's all very good there. The sword effects are just not good. They have no weight to them, and unfortunately because the weapon is like a ranged light beam sword, you don't even feel like you can, like you're really hitting the enemy half the time. You just kind of swing it and you see the light travel across the screen and you're just like, oh, well, all right, I think that hit. It didn't, I think it hit them before it faded. So that's, that's good. All right. And, and there's no like real, if there were more, sound feedback, there's some sort of sound feedback that like, when your beam hit the target, it would feel better. Uh, one of the best examples of this that you could have is how the Overwatch, in Overwatch, the little 
which is, by the way, if you don't know, it's actually that little the hit marker effect. That little sound effect that it plays is actually the sound of a bottle of soda opening. Like some of the carbonation there. So like you could do something like that. It doesn't obviously have to be that from Overwatch, but like there needs to be some better impact, especially with the sword. Uh, as far as the music goes, uh, I, I do, I'd like to point out soundtracks, especially if they're really good. This soundtrack is super intense and super awesome, and it feels really great. There are all these big, super hype and grand types of tracks. It, it, it very much gives this, like, Hollywood action movie vibe, like everything's kind of operating on 10 when it's trying to be on 10. There's, there's mostly a very good variation of tracks that play... There's like the really kind of almost like Hans Zimmer bomb kind of a track that can play while you're doing a lot of the combat. There's another just like really cool kind of like kind of generic maybe action soundtrack uh, that you might get. But then there's also like this like really heavy guitar, heavy metal sound sounding track that plays. Uh, there's like really good variation amongst them. There is one, and I, I'm going to call it the main combat track, because it definitely played by far the most of them. And it's by far the least exciting and the most boring, and it really broke me out of it, because it's essentially made up of, like, a constant repeating melody, and it's not a good melody anyway. So then to, like, play it over and over and over again feels really odd, and it feels really repetitive, and... In, in like the 30 to 35 to 40 minutes, uh, clo maybe like closer to 45 minutes of the time I spent playing the demo, I was already getting fatigued by that song. That's not good. <laughs> That's really not good. So either that track needs to basically get redone or it needs to just get thrown out uh, and, and juiced elsewhere or not used at all. So let's talk about some visuals. This game is getting a lot of praise for its visuals and... Yeah, in terms of raw fidelity, the game looks really good. Uh, not like standout. I, I, uh, I'm. This is gonna sound really mean, but I really disagree when people are saying that man, this looks like a next gen game on its own. I mean, like it looks okay, like it looks good, but no, no, it doesn't look like a next gen game on its own. Uh, like if you were to compare side by side, let's look at all of the games that they showed for the Xbox presentation here that had all the third-party games, which, by the way, was led by Bright Memory Infinite, which also, by the way, massive praise, was one of the only games in that entire presentation that actually showed gameplay. So, honestly, yeah, seriously, props, thank you for actually showing gameplay. But as far as that game, the way it looked compared to, say, like, Dirt 5, or the way it even looked to, like, compared to The Medium, or Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, or Assassin's Creed Valhalla. No, it it looked the weakest of all of those examples. It looks really good. I just think some of the visual pr kind of praise is definitely over-dramatized. In terms of one man making it, yes, it's impressive. It is not next-gen on its own. Let's just be honest here. The game also runs really poorly. So this is a... I'm playing this on a, the demo here, Bright Memory Demo, and I was only recording this in 30 FPS because I went to, I thought, so I started playing the game once, started recording it at 60 FPS, and whenever I record, I always keep, like, my task manager and resources open, so I know if, like, my CPU or my GPU or my RAM or whatever, anything's ever spiking. Nothing ever broke 50%, and I was getting mad frame rate drops. So I stopped recording, played through that opening section again, got the exact same frame rate drops. So I then recorded in 30 FPS thinking, let me try that, which is what the footage you're seeing now here. And I got less frame rate drops than I did when I was doing 60, but it's still pretty bad. It's, and this isn't my computer. So I ended up going through and I was recording Overwatch at 60 FPS to, just to try it like while I was doing, or right after I did this. And no, I can record Overwatch in a match just fine at 60 FPS, no issue. It definitely is within the game. And like I said, I was getting those massive frame rate drops even when I wasn't recording anyway. And I have a decent computer. I have like a Risen, uh, Risen 7 and a 1070 Ti, so it's decent. Uh, I, uh, the frame rate drops wouldn't bother me so much if it wasn't for the fact that the frames, frame rate drops are, are severe and clearly drop below 30 FPS. It's really bad. And I am, I am someone who is a big proponent of frame rate so to see something drop regularly below 30 is just 
it's rough. There's also a lot of screen effects that this that the game tries to throw at you, and they are they're really bad. They're really cheesy and they're really low res, and uh, like the blood effects just seem really off. They they seem really pixelated. They don't seem like they were really properly conveyed onto the screen. It feels like they the the they were from some background, like they had the blood and then there was some transparent background or non, sorry, non-transparent background. And they weren't, like the background wasn't cropped out fully. It, it, like it looks really rough. It's also really obnoxious, the screen effects, and it's incredibly distracting. This is especially during the sequence where at one point you'll be getting flash banged and you, you can't basically can't avoid it. And the glare lasts for like 10 seconds. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you think a like, hi, video game. How would you like to not be seen for 10 seconds because of a flashback? Could you imagine a multiplayer game where that did that? Like, that's insane. Uh, it, yeah, it's just the screen effects are too much. They need to be toned back. They definitely are out of hand. And by the looks of the Bright Memory Infinite gameplay that they showed for the Xbox event, it definitely didn't seem as severe as this demo, so that's good. Besides that, a lot of the particle effects looked really nice. Like, gunfire looked really good. A lot of the abilities that enemies did and attacks that they did was, was you know, it felt really good, felt really impactful. They looked really pretty. A lot of the other effects in the world, like fire and water and all that stuff, I mean, it looks good. It's like it's like the perfect level of pleasable and, and passable. And, like, like, slightly better than, I should say. It's, they look better than what you'd expect, and that's good. Uh, the guns and aesthetics, actually, though, they super remind me of Crisis, by the way. This like, whole game gives me this like mad Crisis vibe with like more RPG mechanics, and that's awesome. And you, you couple that with then adding also into more monster designs and, and monsters in the world and beasts and stuff over what Crisis had, and I'm really excited for this. This looks really great. All of the monster designs that they showed in here were pretty cool. I mean, the undead zombies got like definitely overused, but all the tiger looking guys, the bats, a lot of the enemies looked really good, especially the bosses. So there are two bosses in the game uh, that I played through. I'm sure there's more. It looks like there's multiple paths that you can take. I don't know if you actually take different paths, but there's a one point in the, where you do a puzzle and it seems like it, that may shift. I don't know if that actually changes, but anyway, it's just an observation. By the way, there are two bosses that I encountered. The first one is very clearly a Dark Souls reference or a Souls game reference in general. Uh, you even lit a bonfire <laughs> right before you go to it, which is just, I mean, it's pretty funny, actually, to be honest. It is pretty funny. The first boss, though, that undead design was, like, really good. It felt almost like Artorias. It was awesome. And the entire encounter was, it was f***ing awesome. The, the... The game felt good. The mechanics from that encounter felt good. Ads felt like they served more of a purpose than just being bullet sponges. It, it constantly having to use movement felt really great. And the dash mechanic that exists within the game, this felt all fluid and felt very responsive because of the fact, or especially because of the fact that the, the boss also had very clear tells, but very punishing abilities. I am cool with that. The second boss, this like God of War guy look at thing. Um, yeah, I mean, like it was a fight. Uh, like it, I mean, it happened. I definitely shot at him and he died at one point. That was cool. But the mechanics are pretty bad, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so, the, so let's cut the gameplay. Let's talk about some visuals there. I was going to get into the mechanics of the boss fights, but let's cut the gameplay here. So, like, honestly, as much as I was saying earlier about the guns, uh, the, this straight up, this game feels really good to play. The shooting feels super solid. It's so precise. The effects, the, the sound effects, the audio effects. The way that the feedback, the the reaction, the, the kickback of the gun, everything feels so good. The movement between aiming from hip to ADS, the, the way when you, if you're aiming down sight and when you dash, how it like flicks the gun back and forth into the direction that you were, or the opposite direction that you were moving, feels really natural. And the bullet spray feels very natural. All three different weapons felt very, very unique, the ones that they presented you. All, all the reloading felt like a very reasonable time. I mean, seriously, like, the gunplay in this demo is more solid than some AAA games. No joke. It Genuinely, this is better than some of those games. It's really, really good. The sword swings lack massive impact. It, most of the stuff doesn't feel like it ever lands. The ground slam, like I mentioned earlier, and then there's the other ability, which is, I, it's supposed to be, like, you slash a bunch or something, like a big slash that goes forward, and I'll be completely honest with you, I don't... 
I, I don't think I ever noticed when it actually went off. It has no impact. It has no good, it, it, no good game feel to that maneuver, to that encounter ability, or sorry, that ability. Nothing. It just felt, ugh. And it's very, very unfortunate. The game also loves to take you down this RPG side of things. You, you get XP when you defeat enemies, or when you defeat an enemy, it'll leave this like yellow patch on the ground, and you got or in the air if it's a bat or something, and you kill it in the air. And you got to go gather the patch thing, and when you gather that like a thing, you'll get XP from it. When you get XP, you can then use that XP to unlock abilities. These abilities can be can be passives uh, that just change the way something works, or they can be an additional ability. So like one of the ones that I used was you press Q and E at the same time on the keyboard, and it'll basically give you a massive damage buff, while also throwing all of the enemies into the air and holding them up there for a second. Felt really good to play. There's also one where you can basically change your kind of your F ability, your big like for, like knock up ability, which basically just you shoot forward and, and throws the people and enemies into the air and hangs them there. Uh, there's another one where it like literally locks them in time, which is really great. There's a lot of options here. Things to just get more XP, things to make your dashes better, things to make you sprint better, things to make other abilities, entire new abilities happen. Uh, for a game that I'm, I was not expecting to have any sort of RPG mechanics, this was actually really good. It actually, having played it for a little bit, it my expectation going into the game was that this was going to be an FPS with a sword at times, and what it really turned into was almost like a Do Devil May Cry FPS action game, where you're actually getting graded and ranked and points during combat and utilizing combos and keeping things and dodging mechanics and whatnot, gave you all these points. And the mobility and flexibility between all of your weapons and all of your toolkit feels so smooth that genuinely all I could think about was, and with the music especially, I was like, this feels like I'm playing Bayonetta, or this feels like I'm playing Devil May Cry. It really does. It's just in first person and, and, and more of an emphasis on a shooter than maybe a slasher. It's really fun. It's genuinely a blast. The gameplay loop is really great. And when you accompany that with all the abilities and all the mechanics, uh, RPG mechanics and upgrades, and your your dodge, the mobility, it all is incredible. If only the sword was better and felt better, then it would be even even better. Because I can't think of a better word than better. There's also puzzles in the game. I do just talk about the puzzles real quick. Uh, it's very short. They're 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 so okay. They are like the epitome of okay. They seem like they're trying to have a Tomb Raider vibe, but they. They actually feel like they come off more akin to the simplicity of, say, God of War puzzles. And I don't mean that as a compliment in any way. I really hope the puzzles do get better, especially if they're going to be around more and more, which I believe they're going to be. If not, I think they're going to have the God of War problem, which really, the God of War puzzles are more just... They're just in the way. They're just an annoyance. I think God of War 18 or 2018 definitely does puzzles the best. But if you're talking about like the original trilogy, especially... They're just, uh, they're just annoying. So, the last thing I need to talk about when it comes to Bright Memory and the demo is the business model for this demo. So overall, I want to preface this comment with, I am looking forward to this game. Bright Memory Infinite and what they're showing looks really good and looks even better than I was expecting. And this demo, overall, while I have a lot of problems with it, I kind of tend to notice that I'll have more problems with things I'm more interested in because I am more interested in them and a little more attentive to everything around that game. I am looking forward to this game. Granted, I spent the the nine... Uh, you, so I already bought the game, essentially, and this is the problem that I have with this. So in order to play the Bright Memory demo, you have to buy it. Yeah, you have to spend $9.99... Let me rephrase it. $9.99... Ten dollars, ten U.S. dollars to play the demo. What? Now, granted, if you buy the demo and play it, you will get Bright Memory Infinite. No extra charge. The game will say, and the Steam page will say, oh, if you buy the demo, you get Bright Memory Infinite for free. No, you paid ten dollars. That's not, that's not free. That's ten dollars. A really bad misleading marketing there. Uh, I Yeah, really bad call. I've got to be honest, 
even though this game is good and the demo was fun and enjoyable, I am not looking forward to anything, anything in the future where we're going to be paying for the demo. That is horrible. That is such a disgusting business practice. If this was like $9.99 for an actual maybe early access game, then it's a little more swallowable, but I, I, I still don't love it. I, I think early access is a bit over, like, abused anyway. But for, for like, 40 to 45 minutes worth of gameplay in this demo that is clearly unpolished in a lot of ways and that clearly needs a lot more pass-throughs, this is the equivalent of, of paying for a demo. It is exactly what it looks like I cannot recommend buying the Bright Memory demo at all. I really can't. It's insane that that's a thing, and it's insane that I even have to have this discussion. I can't support it. It's just as much as I can't really support a lot of early access titles in general, but this is, like, especially egregious. Even though I liked it. I really did. I cannot recommend it. If, like, tomorrow Bright Memory Infinite is announced and it's going to be, like, 30 bucks, and you want to pre-order it, which you probably shouldn't do anyway as well i only do this because i like to make videos on it but even i should say you did then okay yeah you buy the bright memory demo for 20 dollars cheaper because you know you'll get the full game anyway i just don't think that's gonna happen now but yeah so that's 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 my thoughts that's my thoughts on bright memory and the demo and i'm really hoping that bright memory infinite ends up becoming really really good so far and overall i am very happy with what i saw and i hope that you are too if you have any thoughts or any further comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. It helps me know what type of content you like, and I will continue to make more because I want to make more because I like making videos. And if you want to see more, you should hit that sub button because that's the only way that I, I sleep at night is to see the sub button light up. That sounds pathetic because it is. I am shameless. Thank you. Also... Feel free to check out my Twitter and Twitch. They are both at Zerbraxi. I tweet uh, lately a lot about comments of pretty much anything game related, but I'm currently playing through Final Fantasy IX as a recording of this video, so I've been tweeting a lot about that. And Twitch. Yeah. I also have a Let's Play channel, Jerry Rigged. You'll see that in the end slate. If you like to watch Let's Plays, please check that out. But that's it. That's it. That's all. I'm out of here. You've been great. I haven't. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.